Hi guys, it's me Jess here and welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you how I make a jumpsuit of my dream. I call it a dream jumpsuit because it's how everything I love. It's the thickest high-weighted wireless pen with side cut pocket in a beautiful lightweight cut to Roy fabric. And this jumpsuit actually took a lot of my time, not for sewing, but for finding a simple method to create a pattern and still make sure the jumpsuit would turn out perfectly. That's why I hope you guys will like it and try it out. And let's get started. The first step is making the pattern for the jumpsuit. To make the front pants pattern, I draw a rectangle with 23 cm width, which is a quarter of my hip size in 90 cm length, which is the length of the jumpsuit from the belly button to over the ankle. From the top width line, I draw another width line at 27 cm next to it. It's the quarter of my hip side plus 4 cm. It will be the hip line of the front pants. From the end of this line, I draw an extra 4.1 cm outside of it. It's 1 by 20 my hip side minus a half centimeter. Then I mark in the middle of the new line before drawing a horizontal line to go through that mark. It will be the center line of the front pins. I mark as 1 by 3 the length line between the top width line and the hip line. Then connect it to the end of the new width line. From the cutting point between the top width line and the center line, I mark to inside 7.5 cm, which is 1 per A my waist side minus 1 cm. I also mark outside 9.5 cm, which is 1 per A my waist side plus 1 cm. So the width between two marks will be 17 cm, which is a quarter of my waist side. Then connect the inside mark to the mask on the length line next to it that I made before. After that, I draw a curved line at the end to create a cross line of the front pins. I connect the outside mark to the other end of the hip line foot. Then I make it a big curve after to create the side life of the front pins. From the top of the cross line, I mark down one centimeter. Then connect it to the top of the side line. Based on it, I draw a slightly curved line to create the waistline of the front pins. I draw a straight line down from the end of the cross line to finish the inside left line of the front pins. After that, I add 1 cm for seam allowance, except 3 cm seam allowance at the ending line. And we will have the front pins pattern after cutting. To make the pattern for the back pins, I will start from the front pins pattern. I move the hip line down 1 cm from the current one. From the cutting point between this line and the length line of the rectangle, I mark out 8.2 cm, which is 1 by 10 my hip side minus 1 cm. From the cutting point between the center line and the top width line, I mark out 2 cm, then drawing a straight line through that mark. After that, I mark at 4.6 cm on that line, which is 1 by 20 my hip side. Then connect it to the mask on the length line next to it. Based on it, I draw a curved line to finish the cross line of the back pins. From the top of the cross line, I draw a slanted line to cut the top width line. 
the width of this line will be 20 cm, which is a quarter of my waist size plus 3 cm for the dot that I will create there later. It will be the waistline of the back pins. At one end of the ending line, I mark out 2 cm, then connect it to the end of the waistline just like before to create the side line for the back pins. I do the same for the other end of the ending line before connecting it to the end of the cross line to create the inside lead line of the back pin. I make this line straight at the lead and a big curve at the end before connecting it to the cross line. After that, I check the length of the side line and the inside lead line at the front pins to make sure they will be the same at the back pin, so we can connect them together later. At the waistline, I mark in the middle foot, then drawing a perpendicular line from dart mark later. The width of this line will be 12 cm, which is the length of the dart at the back bend. From the middle mark on the waistline, I keep making two other marks at 1.5 cm to side of it. So the width between two new marks will be 3 cm, which is the width of the dart at the back pins. That means the leftover width of the waistline will be 17 cm, which is a quarter of my waist side. Then I connect two marks to the end of the perpendicular line to finish the dart. Add in 1 cm for seam allowance except 3 cm seam allowance at the ending line. And we will have the back pins pattern after cutting. To make the side pocket pattern, I cut a rectangle with 20 cm width which is the width of the side pocket and 30 cm length which is the length of the side pocket that I want. From one end of the top width line, I mark inside 14 cm which is a quarter of my waist side minus 3 cm. Then connect that mark to the mask on the middle of the lane line. Based on it, I draw a curved line. After cutting, I use the front pin's pattern to copy the side line and the waist line to the pocket. And we will have the inside pocket pattern after cutting. As I want the side pocket to look a bit slanted at the front, I draw a slanted line with 4cm width and 13cm length from the top side line. I add 1 cm for seam allowance for that slanted line before cutting. Then I copy that line to the pocket pattern. And we will have the outside pocket pattern after cutting by the line. To make the waistband, I fold the paper in half foot. From the end of the folding line, I mark up 6 cm, which is the width of the waistband that I want, plus 2 cm for seam allowance. Then drawing a line through that mark and parallel with the ending line. From the cutting point between this line and the folding line, I mark at 18 cm, which is a quarter of my waist side, plus 1 cm for seam allowance. Then drawing a straight line to that mark. From the end of this straight line, I mark up 1 cm, and doing the same at the top of this line. After that, I connect this mark to two ends of the folding line. Based on it, I draw a slightly curved line to create the top and the bottom waistline. At the end of the top waistline, I move to the inside around 1cm to make it look perpendicular line with the bottom waistline and we will have the waistline pattern after cutting. Moving to the front baddest pattern, I draw a horizontal line cutting a straight line foot. After that, I drew another horizontal line at 22cm from the first one. 
is the length from above the breast to 4cm above the belly button. It's also the length of the front padded that I want. From the cutting point between this line and the straight line, I mark at 11cm, which is a half of the inside shoulder side. From the cutting point between the first horizontal line and the straight line, I mark at 16cm, which is a quarter of my waist side minus 1cm. Then connect two marks together. Based on it, I draw a slightly curved line to finish the side line of the front bodice. Add in 1cm for seam allowance after that, and we will have the front bodice pattern after cutting. We will cut this pattern in full fabric. Now let's start sewing the jumpsuit. I use one and a half meter of light corduroy fabric in floral printing for this DIY. I start making the pants of the jumpsuit first. After cutting two pieces of the back pants pattern, I copy the dark from the pattern to the fabric and sew to finish the dark there. After sewing, I connect two packs pieces together at the cross lines. Moving to the front of the pins. I connect the outside pocket piece to the front pins at the slanted line of the pocket foot. After sewing, I cut the end fabric a bit, then fold the outside pocket piece inside the front pins and make the second seam. After that, I connect the right face of the inside pocket piece to the right face of the outside pocket piece. After sewing, I connect the top and the side of the pocket to the front pins to keep them from moving. Doing the same for the other piece of the front pin before connecting them together at the cross line. Now I'm connecting the front and the back of the pins together at the side line and the inside lead lines. Now 
Before sewing, I chose one side of the slide line to be the side for the zipper that I will add there later. So I keep 14 cm open at one side of the side line for the zipper and sew the rest together. At the end of the pins, I draw a line 7 cm above the ending line first. After that, I fold the end fabric inside around 1 cm, then keep folding to the line just real before and sewing to finish the end of the pins. Moving to the baddest part, to make the front pocket, I cut a rectangle with 22cm width which is the width of the pocket that I want, plus 2cm for seam allowance, and 22cm length which is the length of the pocket that I want, plus 4cm for seam allowance. From the top width line, I draw another line 6cm under it. After that, I fold the end fabric inside 1cm first, then keep folding it to the line just real before, and sewing to finish the top of the front pocket. At the end of the front pocket, I mark up 3cm on the lane line and mark in 3cm on the bottom width line. After cutting, I use the iron to create a folding. And here is the front pocket after on. After cutting the front baddest P, I draw a line at 6cm under the top line foot. Then add in the top of the front pocket to that line later. Make sure the pocket will be in the center of the front baddest and sewing. After that, I connect another front baddest P to the current one at two side lines and the top line. After sewing, I make a small cut at two ends of the top baddest before turning it inside out. I also make another seam to keep two pieces of the front baddest from moving. Here are two pieces of the waistband pattern after cutting. I connect them together as one side foot, then connect the top waistline to the end of the front baddest later. I keep connecting another piece of the waistband to the end of the front baddest. So the front baddest will be in the middle between two waistbands.
to make the shoulder strap, I cut to rectangle with 6cm width, which is the width of the strap that I want, plus 2cm for seam allowance, and 70cm length, which is the length of the strap from the front to the back, plus 5cm for seam allowance. I connect two rectangles together at two length lines and one width line first. After sewing, I make a small cut at the edge of the rectangle before turning it inside out. I use the iron to keep the folding and make the strap look nicer. You will need to make two straps for this jumpsuit. At the back of the waistband, I mark the position for the strap foot, then add in one end of the strap there later. Make sure the strap will be in the middle between two waistbands. To make the bell loop, I cut a long fabric line with 4cm width, which is 4 times the width of the bell loop that I want, and 40cm length, which is 5 times the length of the bell loop that I want. I fold two length lines of the fabric to the middle foot, then keep folding them again and sewing. After that, I cut the long fabric into 5 pieces with 8cm length at one. They are the bell loop of the pins. I add one bell loop to the middle and two others to two sides of the waistband at the back. Make sure the bell loop will be in the middle between two waistbands. At the front, I mark the position for two bell loop foot, then adding them there later. Make sure the bell loop will be in the middle between the outside waistband and the front bodice, and sewing to connect them on together. After the first seam, I make the under stitching seam to keep on the end fabric to one side. Now I'm connecting the battered parts to the pins at the waist. I connect the bottom waistband of the outside piece to the waistline of the pin foot. Remember to add the other end of the bell loop to them before sewing.
After that, I use a 25 cm lens invisible zipper to add to the open part of one side line of the pen that I kept before. After sewing, I connect the rest of the inside piece of the waistband to the outside face, so the top of the zipper will be in the middle between them. I make a small cut before turning them inside out to make the top of the zipper look nicer. Then I connect the bottom waistband of the inside piece to the outside piece. Make this seam over the first one to make the waistband look nicer. The last step is adding the button at the end of the strap and creating the buttonhole at the top of the front bodice. And I finished this DIY. Here's my dream jumpsuit. The fitted look combined with the active vibe and the vintage feeling from the fabric made this jumpsuit so special, just like a dream. I hope you like it and check it out. See you next week.